welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is 10 Cards You Should Be Putting in Your Commander Decks, Episode 59. And we are starting out this week with a card that I can't believe isn't in more decks. Sigil Captain, one green, white, white, Rhino Soldier, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature is a 1-1, one, one, put two plus one plus one counters on it. I mean, can you guys think of any decks that this might want to go in? Like, there's so many. There's so many decks out there. There is a little bit of downside here where if you have a lot of Anthem effects in your deck already because you're making those 1-1s, one, it will shut this ability off. But, you know, even if you have that, you just kind of work around it because it totally seems worth it. It's going to turn those 1-1 one, one creatures into 3-3s. Three, and if you have 10 10 one, one creatures enter the battlefield all at the same time. They're all three threes, right? There is just so many decks that I think this guy goes in. And then on top of it, like we just had Neon Dynasty, which is dealing with a modified theme. So the plus one, plus one counter thing works there. We had, of course, Nuka Pena come out. And there is a lot of decks that are dealing with those one, one creatures and token creatures and all sorts of stuff like that. And I think this is going to fit in a lot of those decks as well. For me, this is a card that is just an auto include in a lot of decks. I actually checked on EDH Rec because I've never seen this in a commander game before. It's only in about 11. 1100 decks that's shockingly low i think because this card really fits in a lot of decks in my opinion Coming in at number two is Scred. One red mana instant. Scred deals damage to target creature equal to the number of snow permanents you control. So, obviously, this cares about your snow permanents, so you got to put in a deck where you have snow. I mean, yeah, I guess you do, but this is just such a fantastic removal spell for one red mana. You know, if you have seven lands in play, this is one mana kill pretty much any creature on the board, which is amazing in red, and it's not that hard to have snow lands in your your deck right you could really just i think in any mono red deck turn all your lands into snow lands there's pretty much no downside to doing so just for this card right there i've done that a couple of times and i'm sure a lot of other people have where you just make all your lands into snow lands and that's all you really need to make these cards viable and you're doing it just so you can use cards like this so honestly i think scred is a good enough targeted removal spell that you could in your mono red deck in particular, just put snow lands in your deck just so that you can use it. Coming in at number three is Skull of Orm, three mana artifact. Pay five and tap, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. This card has to get a mention. It is a colorless way to get enchantments out of your graveyard, right? And if you're in that fringe theme where you are dealing with enchantments, but you don't have, you know, maybe white is probably good at that. Not a lot of other colors are. Or if there's just a deck where you have a really, really important enchantment that you really badly need, this is a way to get enchantments out of your graveyard, right? If you want to get it back. So it's one of those cards that it's going to see play in the format because if you're in that fringe theme that is not typically dealing with enchantments, this is a way to help yourself out. Coming in at number four is Sky Hussar. This is one of my personal favorites. I've used this card in Modern, and I have yet to use it in Commander. I'm kind of hoping at some point I will find a deck where it fits. Three white and a blue, Human Knight has flying and is a 4-3. When it enters the battlefield, untap all creatures you control. That's pretty good. I would imagine there are some decks out there that want to be doing that. However, I don't think I've ever used that ability on that card. The ability that I always use is the forecast. And I'm sure there's a lot of my viewers that aren't familiar with forecast, although I did mention it in my abilities that I want to see Wizards of the Coast reprint because I think it's an interesting one. Tap two untapped white and or blue creatures you control. Reveal Sky Hughes start from your hand draw a card so this is a draw a card effect that doesn't require any mana right and for those not familiar with forecast you can only activate during your upkeep which isn't great and you can only do it once each turn however you're just revealing the card right this is i reveal my sky who start from my hand i tap two creatures draw a card sky who start is still technically in your hand and you can do this again the next turn so every turn all you need is two white and or blue creatures they can be either of those colors tap them down to draw a card that seems pretty good and i don't know if there's any specific commanders where this fits but if you're in a theme where you have lots of white and blue creatures just lying around this is a really easy way to get a free card draw and then of course if you want you can cast this on your main phase and it will untap the creatures that you just tapped i really like that it is a way to draw a card without putting any mana into it at all you can just repeatedly do it every turn I also really like the forecast ability. And speaking of which, we got Spirit Undall coming in next. Two and a white Spirit 2-1 with Shadow. 
and has forecast. This one actually costs mana though. One and a white. Reveal spirit on doll from your hand. Target creature gains shadow until end of turn. And again, we got the forecast ability. So this is something you can repeatedly do every turn. And this is just a great way to make a creature unblockable in white, right? White doesn't have a lot of effects like that. I actually wasn't aware this card even existed, which is interesting because one of my favorite sets of all time is Future Sight. Giving a creature shadow obviously means it can't be blocked except by shadow creatures, which is typically going to mean it's unblockable, right? So this, I think, is, is a unique effect in that it is a way in mono white that you can make a creature unblockable, which can be really, really important in certain decks. Coming in at number six, we got Spiritual Asylum. Two, white, white, enchantment. Creatures and lands you control have shroud. But whenever a creature you control attacks, sacrifice Spiritual Asylum. So this is only going to stick around for as long as you aren't attacking. But of course, there's a lot of decks out there that just aren't going to be attacking at all. And if you want to make it so that your opponents are keeping their hands off your creatures, this is a great way to do it. You also give your land shroud, which could be interesting. I mean, shroud, of course, you got to be careful there, right? Because you can't target your stuff either. But there are a lot of decks out there and maybe there are a lot of commanders out there, right? If you just think about your commander, if you have a deck in white where you have a commander that you don't want your opponents to be touching, but you're also not going to be attacking with, this could be a great fit right i see this all the time about steely resolve if i have a deck where as soon as i hit my commander hits the table my opponents can't react they can't touch it at all it immediately has shroud as soon as it hits the table and if i don't want to be interacting with my commander at all i just want it to sit there and use its abilities it's maybe it's a static ability steely resolve is great that way spiritual asylum is also great that way if you have a commander that you just don't want your opponents to be touching at all or maybe you don't want them to be touching any of your creatures at all right this works on all your creatures and all your lands and if you don't want to be attacking it's not really any downside to it next up we got spring cleaning another card that i just have never seen before and i actually think it's pretty good one in a green instant destroy target enchantment so right away you have a card that for two mana at instant speed you can destroy an enchantment that's not great you know for, for enchantment removal in green that's not a great rate at all however clash with an opponent and this is probably why i'm not familiar with this card because i've never been a big fan of the clash mechanic however if you win destroy all enchantments your opponents control that seems pretty good to commander game right so this is just i destroy the best enchantment you know maybe the smothering type of the ristic study in play there's always going to be one of those lying around and if i clash and win i get to destroy all my opponent's enchantments mine are fine my opponents lose all their enchantments for only two mana at instant speed that seems incredible of course clashing with opponent means you reveal the top card of the library and you want to have the bigger mana value right so if you have the bigger mana value on top of your deck you're going to win so in a deck where maybe you know what's on top of your library and again we had some of those just came out like falco spara for example there's a commander where you're going to be knowing what's on the top of your library all the time so seems like a pretty good fit right you can see that you have something really big and expensive on top of your library you can even cast stuff from the top of your library so you can get the inexpensive thing off the top of your library to maybe get something more expensive on top and probably or possibly at least destroy all of your opponent's enchantments for two mana that seems pretty darn good Coming in at number eight, and we got a three really weird, interesting cards to close out this episode. And again, some of these I'm not exactly sure where you're going to use, but they're just so interesting. I got to give them a mention. Soldevi Sage, one and a blue human wizard, one, one. Tap, sacrifice two lands, draw three cards, then discard one of them. So in blue, you know, if this card was green, they'd be probably going in a ton of decks because there's lots of green decks out there, maybe black decks that want to be sacrificing lands. But even if you're not in that theme, even if you're not in a theme where you want to be sacrificing lands, or maybe you have lots of lands that you can sacrifice, I mean, still, it, I think later in a game, sacrificing two lands that you don't really care about to draw three cards and discard one of them seems pretty darn good, right? So essentially, you're sacrificing two lands to draw two cards because that's what you're gaining. Seems like a pretty good exchange rate. And then also the discard could be playing a, a huge advantage for you there if you're in that theme. I don't know exactly where you play this, but I guarantee you there's going to be at least a few people out there that will see this card and go, wow, that fits great in my, you know, fill in the blank deck. So there it is if you've been looking for a card like that. Coming in at number nine, a really weird, interesting card, a card that I am just like, man, where do you play this? It is so unique and interesting and i love cards like this splintering wind two green green enchantment pay two and a green splintering wind deals one damage to a target creature so right away very unique effect we have this green enchantment with an activated ability 
And honestly, even having activated abilities like this on enchantments isn't exactly super popular. Dealing damage to creatures in green is definitely not popular. However, there's a lot more going on here. You then create a 1-1 one, one green splinter creature token, right? So you're dealing a damage to one of your opponent's creatures and then also creating a creature. It has flying and cumulative upkeep one and a green okay so you're creating a one one flying creature which is good but it has cumulative upkeep one green which is bad and when it leaves the battlefield it deals one damage to you and each creature you control man there's a lot going on there and, and because this card is so unique and because there's so much going on there that's why i'm thinking maybe there's a couple of interesting ways to do it obviously if you want to be dealing damage to your creatures this could be a good fit the really interesting thing here also is the damage you're dealing could be to your own creature right it's like if you're in that enraged theme this seems like a great fit because i can deal damage to my own creature with the splintering wind then create the splinter token then don't pay the upkeep obviously if i don't pay the upkeep that's a a great way to ensure that I'm going to get the damage dealing as well. Now, later on, I can deal even more damage to my creature. I can deal damage to the splinter token to kill the splinter token to deal more damage, right? And if I want to deal damage to all my creatures now, I can use this ability on my enchantment to kill my own splinter token to deal damage to all my creatures, right? So, man, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on in this card. It is very unique. It's probably kind of difficult to use. I would love to know in the comments below if there's anyone out there that is currently using this card. But if you're in maybe that enraged deck or, or some deck where you want to be dealing damage to your own creatures, this seems like a pretty decent fit. And closing out this episode, coming in at number 10 is Spell Weaver Volute. And again, another future sight card. And they're always very interesting and unique. This is an enchantment aura. However, you are an enchanting an instant card in a graveyard. Entirely unique effect. There is nothing else like it. You are not enchanting something that is on the battlefield, which is something you just never see. Or a player, right? Every other aura is either enchanting a permanent or a player. This is not doing any of that. This is actually going to sit on the battlefield like in a normal enchantment would, but the target for it is is an instant in a graveyard. So it could be in your graveyard or in an opponent's graveyard. I'm not gonna go too much into the minutia of the rules of this card. You can go and, and check it out yourself and read all of the different interactions with regards to what happens when certain interactions go on. There's obviously a lot going on there. If you blink this card, I'll just say, right? So if you have an effect that will blink it, it will come back into play and obviously enchanting a new instant in a graveyard if that's something you want to do maybe in your deck however what does it actually do whenever you cast a sorcery spell copy the enchanted instant card you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost if you do exile the enchanted card and attach spell weaver volute to another instant card in a graveyard man that's so great so i mean just very unique in what's happening here obviously you want this in a deck where you're going to be casting sorcery spells every deck does that though there is not a deck out there that isn't casting sorceries at some point However, it's going to be extra good in a deck where you're doing that a lot. So in a is it spell slinger deck or, or some sort of instant sorcery type of deck, you'll probably be doing that a lot. Obviously, you can just enchant the instants in your graveyard so that you can reuse them, but you are exiling them. So maybe you want to do it to your opponents as well. I really like this because you can target your opponent's instance. And if you're in a theme, like an is it deck, for example, doesn't deal with enchantments very well. So now I can choose that cross and grip in my opponent's graveyard if I see an enchantment on the board that I really want to get rid of. I cast a sorcery, I get to cast the Crossing Grip for free, get that Smothering Tithe off the table or whatever the case may be. Can be really good there, right? If you're in a mono blue deck, you're in a mono blue Talron deck, right? Some instant and sorcery spell slinger deck. Again, I can use it the same way. I can use Spell Reaver Volute to target my opponent's stuff in their graveyards that I am having trouble dealing with. I mean, it's just a great value card, I think. If you're going to be casting lots of sorceries in the game anyway, you're just getting free value here, right? You don't have to pay for it. You're just picking an instant in a graveyard that you probably want to cast next because, again, maybe it's a removal spell that you want to get something off the table, card draw, whatever the case may be. You're just getting free value off of the sorceries that you're casting. So seems like a great inclusion in a lot of decks, I think. But that is it for today. That is 10 more cards you should be putting in your commander decks. And if you are thinking of purchasing any of these cards, I do have a TCG player link. It is in the description. Give it a click. It helps support the channel. But that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.